Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to create rectangles um, using a square tiles. So our learning goal for today says, I can construct rectangles from a given number of square units and determine the perimeter. So friends, all that that means, it's a very wordy learning goal today, but all it means is you're gonna be given um, a number of tiles and you're gonna have to determine, like create a rectangle and determine the perimeter. That's all that means. Okay, so I think you guys will do great with our lesson today. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board. You'll need 18 square tiles. You have those in your math toolkit and you'll need your lesson template. Now, if you don't have the 18 square tiles, that's okay. You can draw on your lesson template. That's absolutely fine. Okay, you might just have to do some erasing as you're building, but that's okay. All right, so you're gonna use unit square tiles to build two different rectangles that have an area of 18 square units, okay? So they can look different, but you're coming up with two rectangles that have an area of 18 square units. Remember, area is just length times width, okay? So you're looking for 18. So pause the video, come up with at least two different rectangles. If you wanna come up with more than two, that's fine, but come up with at least two and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's some that I came up with. These two, right? So I have a six by three, a three by six, a two by nine, and a nine by two. So you're gonna now shade unit squares on your grid paper to represent each rectangle you build and label the side links. So now this is where you're getting your lesson template out and you're actually gonna draw these in on your lesson template, okay? So that's why if you didn't have squares before, you would have just skipped to this drawing part, okay? So just make them look just like your squares that you've already built or your rectangles that you've already built, okay? So again, labeling would just be three by six and this one would be like two by nine, okay? Just so you can see, quick reminder of how to label those. So pause the video, shade your squares on your lesson template to match the rectangles that you built and label the side links and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so can we build any other rectangles with your square units that have an area of 18 square units? I want you guys to pause and think about that for a minute. Yeah, so we we can, but how can we be sure? Yeah, you'd have to kind of count the factors as you go through, right? So we're really just building arrays so we can think about multiplication facts. We can list all of the pairs of factors that make 18 when you multiply them. Then we can check to make sure we have a rectangle of each pair of factors. So we could do like 18 times 1 and 1 times 18. Okay, like that would be one that I was missing in the ones that I drew. All right, so how many facts did you come up with? Yeah, there's six facts, right? So let's list all the facts. One times 18, 18 times one, two times nine, nine times two, three times six, and six times three. Are those the ones that you guys came up with? Okay, awesome. Now, the way that we can be sure that we found all of them is we can start at one and we could say one times what number equals 18? Well, we know that one times 18 equals 18. Then we can go to two because that's next. So two times nine equals 18. So we'd have to fill in that missing number. Then we would go to three. Three times what equals 18? Three times six equals 18. Then we could go to four. Four times what equals 18? Oh yeah, that doesn't work, right? Four is not a factor of 18. Then we could go to five. Five times what equals 18? Oh, that's not a factor either, right? So we would skip over that one. Then we would go to six. Six times what equals 18? Six times three. And then we would go on and on and on. And then we would see that these were the only facts that multiplied times or um, give us a product of 18, okay? All right, so friends, thanks to the commutative property, 
which facts are related through the property. Yeah, so you would have 1 times 18 is the same as 18 times 1. 2 times 9 and 9 times 2 are the same, right? Because the commutative property is just that flip-flop. We can flip-flop those factors and still get the same product. And 3 times 6 and 6 times 3 go together. So if you ignore the duplicated factors, how many rectangles can you build using these facts? Yeah, it would just be three, right? Because these would be the same, but there's just one is turned on their side, right? We just kind of rotate them to make the other one. This would be the same, and these would be the same. So that's how we get our three facts of what we would really draw for our rectangles. So make sure that you have at least one from each group drawn and labeled on your lesson template. Okay, so pause the video, make sure that you have at least one set from each of those labeled and drawn on your lesson template. If you already have one of those, each one, one from each group, you're set. You don't have to do anything else. But if you are missing one, like I was missing the one with one times 18. So I would have to draw that into my lesson template. Okay, so pause the video, draw in any that you need, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So here's my lesson template. Here's one times 18. Here's nine by two and three by six. So all three of my rectangles look different. How do you know they have the same area? Yeah, because we used 18 square units or unit squares to make each one, right? When we multiply the side lengths, we get 18 for each rectangle. So there's two different ways you could have checked it, right? You could have counted to make sure you had 18 squares, and then you could have multiplied the side lengths to make sure that it was 18. Do you think our three rectangles also have the same perimeter? Hmm. I'm not so sure. I don't know. So you know what? I want you guys to find the perimeter of each rectangle. So for this one, you're going to have to count the side lengths, right? to find the perimeter. Remember, opposite sides are equal, so that can help you to find that area or the rectangle. I'm sorry, or the, <laughs> let me start over. So you guys, the opposite side lengths are equal in our rectangle. So label those opposite side lengths and that will make it easier for you to find the perimeter of the rectangle. Okay, so pause the video, find the perimeter for each rectangle and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so for my blue rectangle, the perimeter is 38 units. For my green rectangle, the perimeter is 22 units. And for my purple rectangle, the perimeter is 18 units. So why do you think these rectangles have different perimeters? Right, that's crazy. They're, they all have the same area. But why, why do you think they're different with their perimeters? I want you guys to pause the video for a minute. And I want you to just take a minute to think about that and then click play when you're ready to talk about it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so what do you guys think about why the rectangles have different perimeters? Well, they have the same total number of square units, but the squares are all arranged differently. Like in the 1 by 18 rectangle, a lot of the sides on each unit square are part of the perimeter. So that makes this rectangle have a greater perimeter. But if you look at the 2 by 9 rectangle, most of the square or the unit squares have only one side that's part of the perimeter. So like on the 3 by 6 rectangle, some of the unit squares aren't even part of the perimeter, right? They're in that middle row that's like sandwiched together. They're just stuck in the middle. So that's why that one has the smallest perimeter because it has like that whole row in that green rectangle that's not even part of the outside, okay? So pretty cool. So the sides of those rectangles, they're all different lengths. What is the relationship between the shape of the rectangle and the size of its perimeter? Okay, so I want you to pause the video and I want you to think about that. Look at like shape, uh, the blue shape, the blue rectangle. That one has the largest perimeter. So how does the, the relationship between the shape of that rectangle um, impact the size of the perimeter? 
So pause the video, think about that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so let me come back to this one really quick. So rectangles that are long and skinny have greater perimeters because more of each side is part of the perimeter. Okay, so that means you count more of the squares as you count part of the perimeter. And like those ones that are sh like more narrow, like the purple one, there's again that whole row in the middle that doesn't even get counted as the perimeter, but counts for part of the area. So interesting. All right, so I want you to compare the areas and perimeters of your rectangles. Do you see a connection between them? So pause the video. Think about com comparing the areas and the perimeters of each rectangle and seeing if there's a connection. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So here's what I'm thinking. So the three by six rectangle, the purple one, has a perimeter of 18 units and an area of 18 square units. But the other ones don't match at all. So the area and perimeter don't go together all the time. Yeah, so I think it was just kind of more of a coincidence that the purple shape matched up that way to have the same area and perimeter. It's much more common that they have different areas and different perimeters. Okay. All right, so I'm so excited. You guys did an awesome job constructing rectangles from a given number of squares and determining the perimeter. Well done with that, friends. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.